the saying is that the devil is in the details. That's very true in simulation. A small error can have an enormous effect on model performance. Building simulation models is a complex process amplified when simultaneously getting the hang of a new to you software application. To help keep you on track in development of the job shop model, I want to show you a working version of the simulation as well as how to set up the simulation experiment so it runs for eight hours. When first constructing the job shop model, you set the model time units to minutes. And here we see under the properties for the job shop model that it's called job shop and that the model time units are indeed in minutes. Eight hours is 480 minutes. So to set up our simulation so it runs for eight hours, we want to open the properties of the simulation experiment to tell any logic to stop the experiment after 480 minutes. To do this, we want to navigate to the projects pane and click simulation main. This opens the properties for the simulation experiment. To set the duration of our experiment, we want to open and expand the model time area under the properties. Then we can change the criteria or the condition where the simulation stops next to stop where the drop down menu by default probably says never, but you can click that drop down menu item and choose stop at a specified time. So our start time is at zero minutes and we wanna change the stop time to 480 minutes. 480 minutes is eight hours. Now, when we run the simulation, it will automatically stop after eight hours. So we'll save our work. Also, to complete the assignment, you'll want to gather some statistics from the simulation window, including the total number of pallets and trucks sunk, overall utilization of the CNC and forklift resources, and if there are any trucks that are stuck in the model. And by stuck, I mean there's a difference between the number of trucks that entered or were sourced into the simulation versus the number that departed or were sunk from the simulation experiment. So to take a look at where we might gather those statistics, let's run the simulation experiment. So the simulation experiment is running. We can see our forklifts and our pallets and other elements of our simulation model running. And as agents are processed through the model, we can see different values populating on our flowchart, And we can use some of these values to gather that information we're looking for. The statistics are reported by the associated block. So for example, the number of pallets sunk is counted at the sink block for the pallet process. So for example, we see at this exact moment in time, 10 pallets have been sunk from the model. Make that 12 and the number will keep increasing. Likewise, we can look at the sink block for the delivery truck process and count how many trucks have exited or departed the model. And if we look at source delivery trucks, we can see how many trucks have entered the model. Then for our resources, both forklifts and CNC, we can see information on the, their utilization. And beneath the icon, it indicates how many of these resources exist and how many are currently utilized. So at this exact moment in time, 
We have no CNC machines utilized, but we have two available in our resource pool. And the percentages that are reported indicate the aggregate utilization of these resources. All important things to know when making decisions based on the results of a simulation experiment. I hope that quick overview of the job shop model is helpful as you complete the homework assignment. If you run into any problems or have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and I'll help you out.